Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. Frequent viewers know that I use a Siglent oscilloscope for normal work on my bench. Sometimes I have to do work outside the lab or I am in a hotel room and want to tinker a little during the lonely evenings. This is why I bought a DS203 mini oscilloscope. Today I will show you how it works in typical situations and also test if its results are usable. The first impression is very good. A very nice aluminum case with a very nice finishing. It is small and it fits in every baggage. It has a color display which increases its usability a lot as we will see later. Officially it has two analog plus two digital channels. But it only comes with two times ten probes so I will only test these two channels. The probes are ok, however you can not trim them. I read somewhere that this can be done inside the oscilloscope, but I did not want to open it. Because everything is so small, the probes have IPX connectors. So you cannot mix them with conventional probes, which usually have BNC connectors. Let's now start with DC. I switch all not needed channels off by using the small knobs and switches at the top of the case. You have to try yourself a little how it works. Generally, one switch moves the upper menu level and the other the detail level. You can switch between the horizontal and the vertical menu by pressing the triangle button. Colors matter a lot for the operation of the oscilloscope. They always correlate with the respective channel. If something is displayed in blue, it relates always to channel 1. If it is yellow, it correlates with channel 2. So let's check the accuracy of the measurement. I use my very precise voltage reference, which outputs 2.5, 5, 7.5 and 10 volts. I directly connect this reference to channel 1 and show you the measured values by pressing the circle button. As usual, you have not only one value displayed because an oscilloscope shows voltage over time. So I choose the values like peak to peak, RMS, low, high and also DC voltage. Because our voltage does not change, all values should be the same and the peak to peak nearly zero. Let's check. I start with 2.5 volt and I select 1 volt for the vertical range. The display is not exactly at 2.5 volt, but this is what we have to expect and we could even calibrate it if we want. We see also a small noise on the timeline which in reality does not exist. Now let's compare the different values. The first thing which is wrong is the peak to peak voltage. It clearly should be very small for a DC voltage. If we go to minimum voltage we see the cause. The DS203 measures somewhere 0 volt, which definitely is not true for a DC voltage. RMS, max and DC values are similar, which is ok. By the way, the same applies to all voltage levels, not only to the 2.5 volts. But we did not buy our oscilloscope to replace our multimeter. So let's go on. We want to measure changing signals. As an example, I use the signal generated by an ESP8266. I used a very nice library to play music in my subscriber counter. It was ported by Maxint RT to the ESP platform, and you find a link to the library in my comments. This library reads widely available MML files and plays the music on one of the pins of the ESP. I use one of the example sketches to produce some tones and want to check it with my oscilloscope. First we listen to the tones with a loudspeaker and in parallel we watch the voltage across the loudspeaker. We see that the frequency of the tones change and we have pauses between the tones. We see also that we do not have a real square wave signal. When the sketch waits for the next input, we hear a very short chirp 
and we see something on the screen, but what is it? This is a good signal to test the storage function of our oscilloscope. First we set the trickle level. Now we see this very short signal, but we cannot analyze it. If we change to single, we activate the storage function. Now we see the short signal and can do some analysis. With my signal, I even could now zoom in, but unfortunately I did not find this function on the DS203. Maybe a viewer knows how to do it. So we just reduce the time base and wait for the next chirp. Now we can start to see the details and even can adjust the markers to its begin and end to measure that the whole signal takes about 30 milliseconds. And by zooming we can measure the cycle time and calculate the frequency. There are a few additional trigger patterns available if you need them. Now let's compare and connect the same signal to the siglant. It looks similar, maybe it's a little steeper because the siglant can track much higher frequencies. But for sure you can see that to connect a loudspeaker directly to a pin might not be a good idea because the big voltage peaks could easily destroy delicate electronic devices. Now I try to look at the signal with a higher speed. I feed channel 1 with a square wave from my STG1050 waveform generator and I start with 1 MHz. This is not a very high frequency because even the Arduinos are clocked with 16 MHz. The 1 MHz signal is clearly a square wave. This changes if we increase the frequency and around 4 MHz it looks more like a sine than a square. This is because also square waves consist of sine waves, but they also contain waves on higher frequencies. If your device cannot process these high frequency parts, they are filtered and the remaining signal is just a sine wave. If we look at the specifications of the DS203, it says 72 MHz. But in reality, its suitability for digital signals stops at 3 MHz latest. So if you look at the cheaper DS202, this has only 10 MHz sample rate. So the usable maximum frequency for digital signals is also 7 times lower, which is only a few hundred kilohertz. And this can limit its use considerably. Now let's look at the waveform generator which is also built into this DS203. Let's generate a square wave signal of 1 MHz and look at it on the siglant. It has a swing of about 2.5 volts and looks ok. If we go up to the maximum of 8 MHz, again it looks more like a sine than a square wave. If we want to generate a sine wave, we see that the maximum frequency is only 20 kHz. If we look at the output, we immediately see why. The sine wave is generated by a digital to analog converter or DAC. And this one is neither fast nor accurate. So at the end, it produces an ugly signal. We can count 16 discrete steps, which means that the DAC has 4 bits. To show you the difference, I compare it with the output of my waveform generator. You see the difference with your eyes, and if we look at the frequencies contained in the two signals, we see that the pure sine wave produced by the siglant only has one frequency component, or at least nearly. The wave generated by the DS203 contains a lot of other frequencies. If we continue with the features of the DS203, it has the capability to store files on a disk, which can be read by a computer, if the USB cable is connected. You can store the display as a BMP file or the measured values as a text file, which afterwards can be read by Excel. In contrast, to get a BMP with a siglant, you need an additional software, and I never heard of a functionality to save the measured values as a text file. So summarized, I like the shape and the make of the DS203. 
It is a really good looking small device and it fits also in the smallest baggage. Its build quality is excellent. The operation is, because it only has a few buttons and switches, more complicated than with a big siglent with many knobs. So it's definitely not what I would buy for the bench. But for the journey, the DS203 is the winner. Also because it has a small waveform generator, which can be handy sometimes if you quickly need a square signal to try something. And it has a huge advantage. If not connected to the USB, it has absolutely no ground reference and it can be used like a multimeter also on the high side without creating any ground loops. If you are interested in this topic, watch my videos about measuring currents. The readability of the display is good, at least inside my lab. Because I live in Switzerland, I am currently not able to test it in the sun, if you know what I mean. The usage of colors definitely enhances its usability. The triggering and storage functions are ok for general purpose at frequencies used by the I.O. of our devices. So you can check if a signal is there, if the levels are ok and if it looks about how you would expect it. You even can check timings. The maximum frequencies are ok for this model. I think you should not buy a cheaper oscilloscope or you might find its limitations where you do not expect them. All in all, this is a typical second oscilloscope which you take with you. It is suitable for Arduino or ESP projects. If you go lower with the specifications and the price, the chance of being disappointed once in a while will increase. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!